So that's the basis of politics, which is that it doesn't matter what new structure of power we create, or how we rearrange the system, fundamentally it's still a system of individuals all self-interested, self-motivated, and the, the crisis in the West is not an economic crisis, it's a crisis of uh, identity, of meaning, of purpose, that people feel there's no point to their lives anymore. And when we start to think about this wider perspective, and that what is hierarchy, the hierarchy is the use of this coercive power over another human being to turn that human being as an instrument manipulated according to your will. So what is science? Science is when we look at the natural world around us and we use analytical techniques, we, use, we try to measure things, categorise things, try and find the principles or the rules or the laws governing the external world. And that knowledge give us a form of power over the world around us by deconstructing the world. Then we use that, that knowledge of the natural world to develop techniques, techniques we can use for like rearranging the world. And how we put those techniques together is what create technology. That's, that's the techniques. And that is the using the analytical intelligence over the world around us. And we're not only doing that to the natural world, but we're doing that to other human beings as well. And that this form of power, which is the basis of politics, that when it doesn't have... Uh, ethics behind it, when it doesn't have the, uh, the ideals or the social vision, then it becomes exploitative, it just becomes a form of exploitation for its own sake. So a lot of people think that technology, more technology is good, it doesn't matter what technology we build, we just need more of it, but it's not necessarily the case. When we use science to try and analyse the world around us, that's called sociology, it's like a way of using the, the scientific mindset to try and understand the reality around us. And there was a uh, philosopher and, history and uh, historian of science and technology called Lewis Mumford. And he hypothesised that there were two types of technology. One is monotechnics, which is technology that just grows for its own sake. And as it grows, it oppresses humanity as it moves along. So for instance, like when we use a mobile phone... That mobile phone is made in a factory by a worker doing mechanical work all day. The materials that go into it come from mines in Africa that when we extract those resources, pollute all of the rivers, destroy communities by turning the entire landscape toxic. Uh, the, the people there, they no longer are able to live off of the forest around them. The, they become alcoholics the crime rises and it creates war and conflict and also the struggle between different power blocks for these resources creates war and rape and murder. So we have to think that the technology we build, not, ne not necessarily all of it is good, but there are bad effects from the technology. And I'm not even also talking about the materials that go into the technology, even the technology we make, and for instance uh, the social media, has allowed people to uh, become trapped in illusionary worlds which are completely disconnected from reality where they only see the information that reinforce their worldview. But he also proposed another form of uh, technological development called uh, polytechnics, which is when we use our analysis, our sociological analysis of the world around us, our understanding in a holistic way, to try and think about how we can use the technology, how we can configure the technology to support the vision of society that we're trying to create, to increase human freedom, to advance humanity forwards. What's important to realise is no new technology is going to save us. Fundamentally, is, is the human society, which is the real source of richness for humanity, but the technology can be an aid. And so when we think about technology, we have to understand that it doesn't matter what mechanical system that we create, how it looks on paper, the human life and human society is a lot more complex, and that when we try to reduce human beings to a simple economic model that will fit our abstract uh, worldview, what we're actually doing is we're 
reducing humanity, we're removing the actual humanity part, the dreams and aspirations, the ambition and will that give people creative drive, that, that create society, that make people involved in struggle, that is what advances humanity, which is what shapes the world around us. The way that we should be looking at technology is as a force or as a power, we can take a central role in the world by comprehending the actual uh, realities and troubles and challenges facing humanity and conceptualising how do we use the technology to try and advance humanity forwards. I haven't disagreed with anything that you said. See, that's what the mind. police told me when they arrested me. Is it? Well, because I came back from Syria. Yes, yeah, so I got arrested. I have three terrorism investigations against me. And yeah, last time I was talking with the police uh, about all of these ideas, they, the guy was even saying, oh, I agree with all the things you're saying. So It's hard to disagree with some core philosophies about self-sovereignty, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and also like the breakdown of Western civilization, like the moral decline, the lack of purpose and meaning. Is it coincidence that you look a bit like Che Guevara? I like Che Guevara, I think he's pretty cool, but I think Fidel Castro is even more awesome. Are you worried about the government's possible responses to this? Yeah, well that's a, that's a reality, but we have to try and find like a way to stay within legality and go forwards. Yeah, sounds really exciting. Yeah, because there's nothing, there's nothing else happening in technology world. It's like not, there's nothing happening. It's like, I mean, people are working on things, but I'm not really seeing like any big transformation or change mm. coming from any of these projects. There's no really like big vision. We're going to do this.